The Hashish Eater, or The Apocalypse of Evil, by Clark Ashton Smith. Bow down, I am the Emperor of Dreams. I crown me with the million-colored sun of secret worlds incredible and take their trailing skies for vestment when I saw. Throned on the mounting zenith and illume, the spacewood flown horizon infinite, like rampant monsters roaring for their glut. The fiery crested oceans rise and rise by jealous moons maleficently urged to follow me forever, mountains horned, with peaks of sharpest adamant and moored with sulphur-lit volcanoes, lava lank, usurp the skies with thunder, but in vain, and continents of serpent-shapen trees, with slimy trunks that lengthen league by league, pursue my flight through ages spurned to fire, by that supreme ascendance, sorcerers and evil kings, predominantly armed with scrolls of fluvious dragon skin, whereon are worn like runes of ever twisting flame, would stay me, and the sirens of the stars, with foam like songs from silver fragrance wrought, would lure me to their crystal reefs, and moons where viperide senescent devils dwell. With antic gnomes abominably wise, heave up their icy horns across my way. But naught deter me from the goal ordained by suns and eons and immortal walls, and sung by moons and motes, the goal whose name is all the secret of forgotten glyphs, by sinful gods in torrid rubies writ, for ending of a brazen book, the goal whereat my soaring ecstasy may stand in amplest heavens multiplied to hold my hordes of thunder-vested avatars and Promethean armies of my thought that brandish clasped levins. There I call my memories, intolerably clad, in light the peaks of paradise may wear, and lead the Armageddon of my dreams, whose instant shout of triumph is become immensity's own music, for their feet are found founded on innumerable worlds, remote in alien epochs, and their arms upraised are columns potent to exalt with ease ineffable the countless thrones of all the gods that are or gods to be, and bear the seats of Asmodai and Set above the seventh paradise, supreme in culminant omniscience, manifold, and served by senses multitudinous far posted on the shifting walls of time, with eyes that roam the stars and windowed fields of utter night and chaos, I convoke the babel of their visions, and attend at once their myriad witness. I behold in Ombos, where the fallen titans dwell, with mountain-builded walls and gulfs for moat, the secret cleft that cunning dwarves have dug beneath an outright buttress, and I list too late, the clang of adamantine gongs, dinned by their drowsy guardians, whose feet have felt the wasp-like sting of little knives, embrued with slobber of the basilisk, or the pale juice of wounded upas. In some red Antarian garden world, I see the sacred flower with lips of purple flesh, and silver-lashed vermilion-lidded eyes of torpid azure who his furtive priests at moonless eve in terror seek to slay with bubbling grails of sacrificial blood that hide a hueless poison. And I read upon the tongue of a forgotten sphinx the annulling word a spiteful demon wrote in galls of slain chimeras. And I know what pentacles the lunar wizards use that once allured the gulf returning rock with ten great wings of furled storm to pause midmost an alabaster mount and there with boulder weighted webs of dragon's guts uplift by cranes a captive giant built they wound the monstrous moonquake throbbing bird and plucked from off his saber taloned feet uranium sapphires fast in frozen blood 
and amethyst from Mars. I lean to read with slant-lit mages in an evil star, the monstrous archives of a war that ran through wasted eons, and the prophecy of wars renewed, which shall commemorate some enmity of wyvern-headed kings, even to the brink of time. I know the bloom of bluish fungus, freaked with mercury, that bloat within the craters of the moon, and in one still selenic hour have shrunk to pools of slime and fetter. And I know what clammy blossoms, blanched and cavern grown, are prophet to their gods in Uranus, by mole-eyed peoples and the livid seed of some black fruit a king in Saturn ate, which cast upon his tinkling palace floor, took root between the burnished flags, and now hath mounted and become a hellish tree, whose leaf and hairy branches lined with mouths, net like a hundred ropes his lurching throne, and strain at starting pillars. I behold the slowly thronging corals that usurp some harbour of a million masted seas, and sun them along the league-long wharves of gold, bulks of enormous crimson kraken limbs and kraken headed lifting up as crowns the octiomes of perished emperors, and galleys fraught with royal gems that sailed from a sea-fled haven. Swifter and stranger grow the visions, now a mighty city looms, hewn from a hill of purest cinnabar, to domes and turrets like a sunrise thronged with tier on tier of captive moons, half drowned in shifting irubescence. But whose hands were sculptors of its doors, and columns wrought to semblance of prodigious blooms of old, no eremite hath lingered there to say, and no man comes to learn. For long ago a prophet came, warning its timid king against the plague of lichens that crept across subverted empires, and the sand of waste that cyclopean mountains ward, which, slow and ineluctable, would come to take his fiery bastions and his fanes, and quench his domes with greenish tetter. Now I see a host of naked giants, armed with horns of behemoth and unicorn, who wander blindly by the clinging spells of hostile wizardry, and stagger on to forests, where the very leaves have eyes, and ebony is like wrathful dragons roar, to teeks a chuckle in the loathly gloom, where coiled lianas lean with serried fangs, from withering palms with swollen bowls that moan, where leeches of scarlet moss have sucked the eyes of some dead monster, and have crawled to bask upon his azure spotted spine, where hydra-throated blossoms hiss and sing, or yawn with mouths that drip a sluggish dew, whose touch is death and slow corrosion. Then I watch a war of pygmies met by night with pitter of their drums of parrot's hide on plains with no horizon where a god might lose his way for centuries. And there, in wreath light and folgers all convolved, a rout of green, enormous moons ascend with rays like a shivering venom run on inch-long swords of a lizard fang. Surveyed from this, my throne, as from a central sun, the pageantries of worlds and cycles pass, forgotten splendors, dream by dream, unfold like tapestry, and vanish, violet suns, or suns of changeful iridescence, bring their rays about me, like the colored lights imploring priests might lift to glory, the face of some averted god, the songs of mystic poets in a purple world ascend to me in music that is made from unconceived perfumes and the pulse of love ineffable. The lute players, whose lutes are strung with gold of the utmost moon, call forth delicious languors never known save to their golden kings, the sorcerers of hooded stars inscrutable to God. Surrender me their demon-rested scrolls, inscribed with lore of monstrous alchemies and awful transformations. If I will, I am at once the vision and the seer, 
and mingle with my ever-streaming pomps and still abide their suzerain. I am the neophyte who serves a nameless god, within whose fane the fanes of Hecaton Pylos were arcs the titan worshippers might bear, or flags to pave the threshold, or I am the god himself, who calls the fleeing clouds into the nave where the suns might congregate, and veils the darkling mountain of his face with fold on solemn fold, for whom the priests amass their monthly hecatom of gems, opals that are a camel cumbering load, and monstrous alabrundines, won from war with realms of hostile serpents, which arise combustible in vapours many hued and myrrh excelling perfumes. It is I, the king, who holds with a sceptre dropping hand the helm of some great barge of Orichalcha, sailing upon an amethystine sea to isles of timeless summer for the snows of Hyperborean winter and their winds sleep in his jewel-builded capital, nor any charm of flame-wrought wizardry, nor conjured suns may rout them. So he flees with captive kings to urge his serried oars, hopeful of dales where amaranthine dawn hath never left the faintly sighing lope and lisping mole. Firm of heart I fare in panoply with azure diamond, as hero of a quest, Archerna, lights to deserts, Filled with ever-wandering flames that feed upon the sullen marl and soar to wrap the slopes of mountains and to leap with tongues intolerably lengthening that lick the blenched heavens. But there lives, secure as in a garden walled from wind, a lonely flower by a placid well, midmost the flaring tumult of the flames that roar as roars as storm-possessed sea, implacable forever, and within the simple grail the blossoms lifts, there lies one drop of an incomparable dew, which heals the parched weariness of kings, and cures the wound of wisdom. I am page to an emperor, who reigns ten thousand years, and through his labyrinthine palace rooms, through courts and colonnades and balconies, wherein immensity itself is mazed, I seek the golden gorget he hath lost, on which in sapphires fine as Oris see, are writ the names of his conniving stars and friendly planets. Roaming thus I hear like demon tears, incessant through dark ages, the drip of sullen clepsydrae, and once in every lustrum hear the brazen clocks innumerably clang, with such a sound as brazen hammers make, by devils dined on tombs of all the dead. And nevermore I find the gorget, but at length I find a sealed room whose nameless prisoner moans with a nameless torture, and would turn to hell's red rack as to a lilied couch. From that whereon they stretched him, and I find prostrate upon a lotus-painted floor the loveliest of all beloved slaves my emperor hath, and from her pulseless side a serpent rises, whiter than the root of some venefic bloom, in darkness grown, and gazes up with green-lit eyes that seem like drops of cold congealing poison. Hark! What words were whispered in a tongue unknown, in crypts of some impenetrable world? Who is the dark, dethroning secrecy I cannot share, though I am king of sons, and king therewith of strong eternity? whose gnomons with their swords of shadow guard my gates and slay the intruder. Silence loads the winds of ether, and the worlds are still to hear the word that flees mine audience. In simultaneous ruin, all my dreams fall like a rack of fuming vapours raised to semblance by a necromant, and leave spirit and sense unthinkably alone above a universe of shrouded stars and suns that wander, cowled with sullen gloom, like witches to a sabbath. Fear is born in crypts below the nadir, and hath crawled, reaching the floor of space, and waits for wings to lift it upward like a hellish worm, vain for the flesh of cherubim. Red orbs and eyes that gleam remotely as the stars, but are not eyes of suns or galaxies, gather and throng to the base of darkness, 
A flame behind some black abysmal curtain burns, implacable and feigned to whitest wrath. I raised wings that flail the whiffled gloom and make a brief and broken wind that moans as one who rides a throbbing rack. There is a thing that crouches, worlds and years remote, whose horns a demon sharpens, rasping forth a note to shatter the donjon keeps of time, or crack the sphere of crystal. All is dark for ages, and my tolling heart suspends its clamour, as within the clutch of death, tightening with tense, hermetic rigours. Then, in one enormous million flashing flame, the stars unveil, the suns remove their cowls, and beam to their responding planets. Time is mine once more, and armies of its dreams rally to that insufferable throne, firmed on its zenith. Once again, I seek the meads of shining moly I had found in some anterior vision by a stream no cloud hath ever tarnished, where the sun, a gold narcissus, loiters evermore above his golden image. But I find a corpse the ebbing water will not keep, with eyes like sapphires that have lain in hell and felt the hissing coals, and all the flowers about me turn to hooded serpents, swayed by flutes of devils in lascivious dance, meet for the nod of Satan when he reigns above the raging Sabbath, and is wooed by sarabands of witches. But I turn to mountains, guarding with their horns of snow the source of that befouled rill, and seek a pinnacle where none but eagles climb, and they with failing pennants. But in vain I flee, for on that pylon of the sky some curse hath turned the unprinted snow to flame, red fires that curl and cluster to my tread, trying the summit's narrow cirque. And now I see a silver python far beneath, vast as a river that a fiend hath witched, and forced to follow reverted in its course to fountains whence it issued. Rapidly its winds from slopes to crumbling slope, and fills ravines and chasmal gorges, till the crags totter with coil on coil incumbent. Soon it hath entwined the pinnacle I keep, and gapes with a fanged unfathomable moor, wherein great Typhon and Enceladus were oughts of daily glut. But I am gone, for at my call a hippogriff hath come, and firm between his thunder-beating wings I mount the sheer cerulean walls of noon, and see the earth spurned pebble fall lost in the fields of nether stars, and seek a planet where the outwearied wings of time might pause and furl for respite, or the plumes of death be stayed, and loiter in reprieve above some deathless lily, for therein beauty hath found an avatar of flowers, blossoms that clothe it as a coloured flame, from peak to peak, from pole to sullen pole, and turn the skies to perfume. There I find a lonely castle, calm and upbeat, save by the purple spears of Amaranth, and leafing iris, tender, sordid, walls of fluid marble, wonderful, with rose and domes like golden bubbles, and minarets that take the clouds as coronal, these are mine. For voiceless looms the peaceful barbican, and the heavy teeth portcullis hangs aloft to grin a welcome. So I leave a while, my hippogriff to crop the magic meads, and pass into a court the lilies hold, and tread them to a fragrance that pursues to win the portico, whose columns, carve of lazuli and amber, mock the palms of bright Edinek. Forests capitaled with fronds of stone fretted to airy lace, enfolding groups that seem as tawny clusters of breasts of unknown auris, and convolved with vines of shut and shadowy leafed flowers, like the dropped lids of woman enduring some loin dissolving ecstasy. Through doors inlaid with lilies twined luxuriously, I enter dazed and blinded with the sun, and hear in gloom that changing colours cloud, a chuckle sharp as crepitating ice. Upheaved and cloven by shoulders of the damned who strive in antenora, when my eyes undazzled and the clouds of colour fades, 
I find me in a monster-guarded room Where marble apes with wings of griffin crowd On walls an evil sculptor wrought And beasts wherein the sloth and vampire bat unite Pendulous by their toes of tarnished bronze Usurp the shadowy interval of lamps That hang from ebon arches Like a ripple borne by the winds From pool to sluggish pool In fields where wide coctus flows his bound A crackling smile around that circle runs And all the stone-wrought gibbons Stare at me with eyes that turn to glowing coals A fear that found no name in Babel flings me on, breathless and faint with horror, to a hall within whose weary, self-reverting rounds the languid curtains, heavier than pals, unnumerably depict a weary king who fain would cool his jewel-crusted hands. In lakes of emerald evening, or fields of dreamless poppies pure with rain, I flee onwards, and all the shadowy curtains shake with tremors of silken sighing mirth and whispers of the innumerable king breathing a tale of ancient pestilence whose very words are vile contagion. Then I reach a room where caryatides, carved in the form of voluptuous titan women, surround the throne of flowering ebony, where creeps a vine of crystal. On the throne there lolls a wang, enormous worm, whose bulk tumid with the rottenness of kings. Overflows its arm with fold on creased fold, obscenely bloated, open mouthed he leans, and from his foldless throat a score of tongues, deepening like to wreaths of torpid vipers, drivel with phosphorescent slime that runs down all his lengths of soft and monstrous folds, and creeping among the flowers of ebony, lends them the light of tiny serpents. Now, Ere the horror, ope those red and lashless slits of eyes that draw the gnat and midge. I turn and follow down a dusty hall, whose gloom lined by statues with their mighty limbs ends in a golden-roofed balcony, sphering the flowered horizon. Ere my heart hath hushed the panic tumult of its pulses, I listen from beyond the horizon rim, a mutter faint as when the far simu mounting from unknown deserts opens forth wide as the waste those wings of torrid night that shake the doom of cities from their folds and musters in the van a thousand winds that with disrooted palms for besoms rise and sweep the sands to fury as the storm approaching mounts and loudens to the ears of them that toil in fields of sesame. So grows the mutter, and a shadow creeps above the golden horizon like a dawn of darkness climbing zenithward. They come, the Sabbath of retribution, drawn from all dreaded spheres that knew my trespassing, and led by vengeful fiends and dire alisters that owned my sway aforetime. Cockatrice, Python, Tragilifus, Leviathan, Chimera, Martikoras, Beamoth, Gurion and Sphinx, and Hydra. On my ken arise as might some afrit builded city consummate in the lifting of a lash with thunderous domes and sounding obelisks and towers of night and fire alternate wings of white hot stone along the hissing wind. Bear up the huge and furnace-hearted beasts of hell beyond Rotilicus, and things whose lightless length would meet the gyre of moons born from the caverns of a dying sun, uncoil to the very zenith, half disclosed, from gulfs below the horizon, octopi, like blazing moons with countless arms of fire, climb from the seas of ever-surging flame, that roll and roar through planets unconsumed, beating on coasts of unknown metals, beasts that range the mighty world of Alioth. Rise, aforesetting the heavens, with multitudinous horns, amid whose maze the winds are lost, and borne on cliff-like brows of plunging scolopendras. The shell-wrought tower, 
of ocean witches loom, and griffin mountain gods, and demons throned on sable dragons, and the crocodiles that bear the spleenful pygmies on their backs, and blue face wizards from the worlds of Syath, on whom titanic scorpions fawn, and armies that move with fronts reverted from the foe, and strike athwart their shoulders at the shapes their shields reflect in crystal, and Idola fashioned within unfathomable caves by hands of eyeless peoples, and the blind worm-shapen monsters of a sunless world, with krakens from the ultimate abyss, and demogorgons of the outer dark, arising shout with dire multisonuous clamours, and threatening me with dooms ineffable, in words whereat the heavens leap to flame, advance upon the enchanted palace, falling for league on league, for their shadows blight and eat like fire the amaranthine meads, leaving an ashen desert. In the palace I hear the apes of marble shriek and howl, and all the woman-shapen columns moan, babbling with terror. In my tenfold fear and monstrous dread unnamed in any hell, I rise and flee with the fleeing wind for wings. And, in a trice, the wizard palace reels, and springing to a single tower of flame, goes out and leaves nor shard nor ember. Flown beyond the world upon that fleeing wind, I reach the gulf's irrespirable verge, where fads the strongest storm for breath, and fall, supportless, through the nadir plunged gloom. Beyond the scope and vision of the sun, to other skies and systems, in a world deep wooded with the multicolored fungi that soar to semblance of fantastic palms, I fall as falls the meteor stone and break a score of trunks to atom powder. Unharmed, I rise and through the illimitable woods among the trees of flimsy opal roam and see their tops that clamor hour by hour to touch the sun's iris. Things unseen, whose charnel breath informs the tideless air with spreading pools of fetter. Follow me, elusive, past the ever-changing palms, and pittering moths with wide and ashen wings flit on before, and insects emerald-hued descending hurtle through the gorgeous gloom and quench themselves in crumbling thickets. Heard far off, the gong-like roar of beasts unknown resounds at measured intervals of time, shaking the riper trees to dust that falls in clouds of acrid perfume, stifling me beneath an irised pal. Now the plumatos grow far apart and lessen momently to shrubs a dwarf might topple. Over them I see an empty desert all ablaze with amethysts and rubies and the dust of garnets or carnelians. On I roam, treading the gorgeous grit that dazzles me with leaping waves of endless rutilance, whereby the air is turned to a crimson gloom through which I wander blind as any cobalt till, underfoot, the grinding sands give place to stone or metal with a massive ring, more welcome to mine ears than golden bells or tinkle of silver fountains. When the gloom of crimson lifts, I stand upon the edge of a broad black plain of adamant that reaches levels as windless water to the verge of all the world, and through the sable plain a hundred streams of shattered marble run, and streams of broken steel, and streams of bronze like to the ruin of all the wars of time, to plunge with clangour of timeless cataracts adown a gulf eternal. So I follow, between a river of steel and a river of bronze, with ripples loud and tuneless as the clash of a million lutes, and come to the precipice from which they fall, and make the mighty sound of a million swords that meet a million shields, or din of spears and armour in the wars of half a million worlds and eons. Far beneath they fall through gulfs and cycles of the void, and banish like streams of broken stars into the nether darkness, nor the gods of any suns, nor demons of the gulfs will dare to know what everlasting sea is fed thereby, and mounts forevermore in one unebbing tide. What nimbus cloud, or night of sudden and supreme eclipse, is on the suns of opal? At my side the rivers run with a wane and ghostly gleam, through darkness falling as the night that falls from spheres extinguished.
Turning, I behold, betwixt the sable desert and the suns, the poised wings of all the dragon rout, far flown in black occlusion, thousandfold, through stars and deeps and devastated worlds, upon my trail of terror, griffins, rock and sluggish, dark chimeras, heavy wing after the rabbin of some dispeopled world, and harpies and the vulture birds of hell, hot from abominable feasts, and fain to cool their beaks and talons in my blood. All, all have gathered, and the wingless rear, with rank on rank of foul colossal worms, makes horrent now the horizon. From the one I hear the shrieks of wyverns loud and shrill, as tempests in a broken plain and roar of sphinxes, like relentless tolls of bells from towers infernal. Cloud on hellish cloud they arch the zenith, and a dreadful wind falls from them, like the wind before the storm, and in the wind my riven garment streams, and flutters in the face of all the void, even as flows a faffling spirit, lost on the pit's undying tempest. Louder grows the thunder of the streams of stone and bronze, redoubled with the roar of torrent winds, inseparably mingled. Scarce I keep my footing in the gulfward winds of fear, and mighty thunder beating to the void, in sea-like waves incessant, and would flee with them, and prove the Nadir founded night, where falls the stream of ruin. But when I reach the verge, and seek through the sun-deafening gloom to measure with my gaze the dread descent, I see a tiny star within the depths, a light that says me, while the wings of doom convene with their thickening thousands. For the star increases, taking to its hueless orb, with all the speed of horror-changed dreams, the light as of a million million moons, and floating up through gulfs and glooms eclipsed, it grows and grows a huge white eyeless face that fills the void and fills the universe and bloats against the limits of the world with lips of flame that open.